Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about which CPU to buy for a Hackintosh build in 2023 for best compatibility with macOS Ventura. First, for a Hackintosh, it's best to choose an Intel CPU over AMD. Ryzen CPUs do work, but there are some pretty big caveats. First, they have problems running Adobe apps, so if you want to use apps like Premiere, Photoshop or Lightroom, they may not work at all or you may see frequent crashes. There are patches out there, but installing updates often means that you have to patch them again and it gets kind of messy. Also, virtual machines like Parallels and VMware Fusion don't work as Ryzen doesn't support the Apple Hypervisor framework on macOS. Many people have reported instability in audio apps as well. So for these reasons, I'd advise against buying a Ryzen CPU if your intention is to build a Hackintosh. So that leaves us with Intel. With the release of Ventura, Apple dropped support for Macs older than 2017. This means that there's no more support for the integrated GPU on 6th gen CPUs or earlier. So Ventura supports Intel Core i3, i5, i7 and i9 CPUs and iGPUs from 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th gen. 11th, 12th and 13th gen will work too, but since macOS doesn't support the Intel UHD 700 series graphics on the new CPUs, you'll need a dedicated graphics card. Although KB Lake is the minimum for Ventura, I definitely recommend going with 8th gen or newer. The Intel Mac Mini used an 8th gen Intel CPU and it was still being sold until January this year. Since Apple generally support older Macs with OS updates for 5 years after they're discontinued, it's likely that it will be supported for the next 3 to 4 years at least. The 7th gen was used in the 2017 iMac, so you should use the iMac 18,1 SM BIOS if you're using integrated graphics, or iMac 18,2 if you've got a dedicated graphics card. Since the 2017 iMac is already 5 years old, it's unlikely that they'll be supported past macOS 13. Here's a speed comparison of the i3-7100, i5-7500 and the i7-7700K compared to the base M2 in the 2023 Mac Mini and Geekbench 6 Multicore. As you can see, the 7th gen hasn't aged well, with even the 7700K being just over half the speed of the M2. With the 8th generation, Intel increased the core count with an extra 2 cores across the board. 8th gen CPUs were used in the 2018 Mac Mini and the 2019 iMac. So for best results you should use the iMac 19,1 SM BIOS. Since the Intel Mac Mini was only discontinued a few weeks ago, we should see the 8th gen supported by macOS for the next 3-5 to five years. So if you're intending to use your Hackintosh for a while, it's a much better choice than the 7th gen. Looking at the Geekbench scores, we can see that the i5-8500 is just over half the speed of the M2, and the 8700K is about 30% slower. The 9th gen Coffee Lake refresh was only a small improvement over 8th gen, but it also added the Core i9. These processors were also used in the 2019 iMac, so you should use the iMac 19,1 SM BIOS for best compatibility. Looking at Geekbench scores, the i5-9500 is just over half the speed of the M2, the i7-9700K is about 25% slower, and the i9-9900K is almost on a par with the M2. The next generation Comet Lake was the last to be used in real Max. So, for best support, including full iGPU support and Metal 3 compatibility, this is the one you should go for. 10th Gen Comet Link CPUs were used in the 2020 iMac, so if you're using a 10th Gen Intel Core i3, i5 or i7, you should use the iMac 20,1 SM BIOS, and if you're using a Core i9, you should use iMac 20,2. Looking at the Geekbench scores, we can see that the i9 beats the M2 by about 5%. The i7 is about 10% slower, and the i5 is about 30% slower. 11th generation saw Intel switch to a new 700 series integrated GPU. No real Macs have used these chips, so they're unsupported in macOS. This means that for 11th gen and later, you'll need a dedicated GPU. It also means that you'll have to use the SM BIOS of a real Mac that didn't use an iGPU, like the iMac Pro 1,1 or Mac Pro 
These SM BIOS will give you the best results with working DRM and hardware video encoding and decoding using your graphics card instead of QuickSync. Looking at the Geekbench scores, both the i7 and i9 comfortably beat the M2, while the i5-11500 is about 15% slower. 12th generation saw Intel switch to a new hybrid architecture with P cores and E cores. To get all of these cores working in macOS, newer versions of OpenCore have added a new quirk on the kernel called Provide Current CPU Info. You should enable this quirk if you're running a 12th gen or newer CPU to enable all cores. You may also want to install the CPU Topology Rebuild Kext that aims to improve performance by optimizing the core configuration. I'll link to this Kext down in the video description. As with 11th gen, the integrated graphics aren't supported, so you'll need a dedicated graphics card. And you should use either the iMac Pro 1.1 or the Mac Pro 7.1 SM BIOS. Looking at the Geekbench scores, the new architecture brought some significant speed gains. The i5-12500 is now about 5% faster than the M2, the 12700K is almost 40% faster, and the i9-12900K is about 60% faster. Finally, we have 13th gen. These use the same hybrid architecture as 12th gen, so you'll need to enable the provide current CPU info quick in open core, install the CPU topology rebuild kext, and use either the iMac Pro 1.1 or the Mac Pro 7.1 SM BIOS. And again, you'll need a dedicated graphics card since the iGP wasn't supported. Looking at the Geekbench scores, there have been some massive speed improvements over 12th gen, and now even the Core i3 is only 15% slower than the M2. The i5-13500 is almost 50% faster, the i7 is 70% faster, and the i9-13900K is nearly double the speed of the M2. So, which CPU is the best overall? For me, the i5-13500 is the sweet spot. 50% faster than the M2 for only around €250 Euros or dollars, and not too power hungry. There'll be a link down below if you're thinking of buying one. I hope this video helps if you've been thinking of building a Hackintosh and were wondering which CPU to get. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. In the next video, I'll be talking about GPUs. Which GPUs work in macOS Ventura, which offer the best value, and which offer the best performance. That's it for this video, thanks for watching.